Namaste to everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Life Positive Show. Our guest for tonight is somebody very special. He is Mr. Virendra Kazi, the exponent of Kashmir Shaivism in India and abroad. Mr. Kazi is a new age spiritual leader and a motivational guru. Uh, his name has become synonymous with Kashmir Shaivism everywhere. Uh, Kashmir Shaivism is a branch of the Shaivite philosophical tradition that explains how the formless supreme principle known as Shiva manifests the universe. She, uh, Kazi has, very, has wide exposure to all the leading spiritual scriptures, has done in-depth study of diverse cultures and thoughts, and has been a top-notch corporate leader for 30 years. He is now committed to spreading the knowledge of Kashmir Shaivism across the world. Thank you, uh, Kazi ji for gracing our show tonight. It's a great honor to have you, somebody who's the leading light of Kashmir Shaivism across the world, who's bringing out this obscure knowledge and tradition once again into the limelight, who is spreading the light of self-knowledge, Advaita, in the world through a completely different tradition and path of Kashmir Shaivism, which we had lost over the years. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Life Positive Show. So let me uh, begin with the first question to you, Kazi ji. Please tell us about Shaivism and speci especially Kashmir Shaivism. How is it different from other sects of, uh, of Shaivism in India? Om Namah Shivai. Om Namah Shivai. The, the tradition of Shaivite tradition in Indian spiritual thought, we have Shaivite tradition, we have Vaishnavite tradition, and we have Shakti tradition. These things apparently we are all familiar with. Mm -hmm. Now, as you said, how many traditions are of Shaivite traditions? Because people do ask me this question. I can broadly classify four Shaivite traditions, a broad categorized Shaivite tradition in India. So what are these four Shaivite traditions? Two are very local to South India. Number mm -hmm. one is Shaivite Siddhanta. Shavi, it's also called Tamil Shaivism. It's very old, thousands of years old. It's based on the life of 42 nine Mars, life of 42 saints, their teachings, their life. And it is also very close to Kashmir Shaivism. In fact, uh, basic manifestation, as you said, 36 manifestations, which will I will be talking, that is same in Shav Siddhanta as well as in Kashmir Shaivism. The only basic difference is it is a purely a dualistic Shaivism. Mm -hmm. Kashmir Shaivism is strictly monoistic. Dualistic means Pashu and Pati. Pati is a Parameshwar. Pashu is a bonded soul. Mm -hmm. We are a bonded soul and by his grace, we can get liberation by the grace mm -hmm. of God. That is Shaiva Siddhanta. In Kashmir Shaivism, is strictly, absolutely monoistic religion. We are nothing but part of Lord Shiva himself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we? Lord Shiva has become Jiva by his own will, by adopting Maya. Then we have to, by the path of Shu Sutra, we go back to the Shiva, realize. Mm -hmm. That's the basic difference between Kashmir Shaivism and Shaiv Siddhanta. Now, I was on South Indian two great traditions. Shaiv Siddhanta I described. Next is Veer, Shaiv, Veer Shaivism, which is also called Lingayat, which was took birth in Karnataka. King Baswana was the leader of this movement because it was a reformist movement to overcome unnatural ritual traditions and you know a section of people are getting hmm. off from the spiritual path. Hmm. So I created Veer Shaiva, a hmm. very simple six vachanas of Baswa. Hmm. This also is very popular in Karnataka. You know, those Lingayats, they are also doing a lot of good work, Lingayat Education Society, other things. Hmm. There are two local Shaivisms. Now, two Shaivism, basic Shaivism, Shaivism based on Vedanta is called Shaivism propounded by Adi Guru Shri Shankaracharya, Vedantic Shaivism. In fact, it is basically essentially based on, inspired by Upanishadas, that is Advaita Shaivism. Hmm. Shaivism, which is inspired by Agamas or revelation texts, a discourse between Lord Shiva and Mata Parvati, which also will call Tantra, that is Kashmir Shaivism. Mm. Fundamental difference will be, we can compare with Vedanta and what's called Agamas or Tantra. 
tantra yeah. now that brings me to a very uh, very very fascinating question which i think i want to take up later on because mm. i have another question uh, related to chefs and now we do uh, understand it is coming from the upanishadic understanding uh, of the divine and the cosmos and it is completely monistic in nature and which is a very very uh, say the fundamental principle on which the uh, which the universe uh, exists and function uh, also we have uh, vaishnavism and also patanjali yoga these are like three main sects which seem to be uh, like running uh, in india currently and also in the past i feel that uh, you know, uh, vaishnavism or patanjali yoga they have become more mainstream than shaivism so what is the difference between all three and what do you think can be the reason for this <laughs> very, yeah, that is current very interesting question uh, very interesting yes yes actually people should have a little understanding of things because patanjali is a technique basically hmm hmm Patanjali yoga is nothing but a technique. Hmm. You know, hmm. after uh, eight limbs of yoga uh, technique, Patanjali can apply to anywhere. It's one of the techniques, whether it is the Vaishnavism or Shaivism or Shakti Marsh. Hmm. So, if we had to categorize, we can categorize either Shaivism, Vaishnavism, or even Shakti tradition. Hmm. So, Patanjali provides a. It's purely a technique. Hmm. Uh, so uh, that is about it. and the basic difference between shaivism and vaishnavism vaishnavism because most often in very often we see that the, uh, they they are uh, poles apart or rather even if not poles apart seem to be at loggerheads with each other each trying to claim supremacy over the other now what is this fundamental difference or dichotomy which is existing in uh, indian spirituality that these two very basic spiritual paths don't seem uh, eye to eye with each other basically what is the vaishnavite tradition mm. you know it is a avatar of vishnu avatar mm. ram krishna magar it comes from the that stream basically it is tradition it is purely a dualistic mm. please remember uh, shaivite whether we have advait shaiva shankaracharya or kashmir shaivism they are also they are all monistic uh, religions monistic this thing mm. but the basic difference is krishna bhakti हम पापी है आप परमेश्वर है ट्रेडिशन एसेंशियली बेस्ड ऑन डिवोशन लव एंड भक्ति इज कृष्णा भक्ति बट आई टेल यू लेट मी कंट्रीब्यूट माय व्हाट इज माय फीलिंग अबाउट इट काइंडली लिसन बेसिकली आई विल टेल यू बिकॉज सिंस आई हैव बीन अ लिटिल फैसिनेशन इज मिस्टिसिज्म आई गो मिस्टिक पाथ आई मीन मिस्टिक्स they may be even sufis krishna mm. bhakti they are in different but they are connected there is only one god mm. only one path mm. this is for a, should i word use the word ignorant people to mm. see the difference a wise man will see all a unity mm. Mm. coming back because since you touched this uh, dualistic krishna vaishnava bhakti there was a vaishnava saint in kashmir his name was pandit parmanand legend goes he was a mystic he will go in trance they say on his one shoulder to be radha one shoulder to be krishna she will say mm. that they are with me he will this thing one of his very important composition is called radha swayamvar mm. radha so in fact i am working on that but mm. so is a fascinating i am recording do some recording on that mm. the very important it starts with that gokul is within me only mera hada hi gokul hai gokul is within me only dear i see your play mm. chit and vimarsh light and consciousness and prakash prakash mm-hmm. before me oh lord krishna acha what this shows as this is essential of agnik bhakti a unity between self and the god okay to phir what is for a wise people you follow anything but ultimate source is one only तो कृष्ण और शिव में क्या कोई अंतर है क्योंकि एक में आप देखते हैं कि एक वो डुअलिस्टिक भक्ति जो है वो हमें दिखती है जहां पे ईश्वर अलग है और उनके संतान अलग है और दूसरे में हम देखते हैं कि वो कंप्लीट मर्जिंग हो रही है और और भी बहुत चीजों को वो बिल्कुल पार ही चले जा रहे हैं तो क्या कुछ अंतर है कृष्ण में या शिव में या दोनों एक ही शक्ति के दो रूप हैं और दो तरह के जो जो मार्ग हैं भक्ति में या अध्यात्म पे उसका वो रिप्रेजेंटेशन करते हैं अगर आप एक गोलदार कृष्ण शिव जी और राम है तो भी कम से कम मॉरलिस्टिक किंग Krishna was a charming totality, god of totality, Sola Kala Avatar. Hmm. Absolute Shiva and Krishna is absolute one and the same thing. Hmm. 
दैट्स वाई मैंने इसीलिए हैप्पी अगर आपने मेरी ध्यान से सुनी ना वो पंडित परमानंद की कविता यूनिटी गोकल इज मी देयर आई शिवर प्ले एग्जैक्टली दिस थिंग इन फैक्ट आई हैड दिस टॉक इन देयर वन हम स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम मथुरा हैड कम आई हेटेड दिस थिंग दे वर फैसिनेटेड देन दे सेड अरे ये तो राधा का ये बाब है वन मैन कैन गिव इट एक्सपेंडेड माय स्टेटमेंट व्हाट इट नथिंग डिफरेंट ओके ओनली फॉर इग्नोरेंट फॉर अ वाइज नो डिफरेंस तो फिर ये ये डिविजन्स है क्यों uh, मतलब एक तरफ तो जो वो जो अद्वैत का मार्ग है वो यही कहता है कि परमात्मा एक है और वो अपना जो प्रकृति है या जो क्रिएशन है उसके साथ वो एक है ऐसा नहीं कि वो उसने प्रकृति या क्रिएशन अलग है या वो उससे अलग है वो इवेंचुअली अपने ही क्रिएशन से एक एक सार है एक तो ये मार्ग उसके बाद फिर हम देखते हैं कि हमारे आध्यात्मिक मार्गो में बहुत सारे जो है वो डाइवर्सिफिकेशन होते जाते हैं और जो अपनी जगह ठीक लगते हैं भक्तों को एक तरह का मार्ग सुझेगा या ज्ञान मार्गियों को एक तरह का मार्ग सही लगेगा या फिर कर्मयोगियों को दूसरे तरह का मार्ग सही लगेगा अब जैसे कृष्ण और शिव दोनों एक ही शक्ति के रूप हैं तो अगर एक ही हैं तो इस दो इस तरह से विभक्त क्यों हुए या हमें ऐसा क्यों दिखता है वाई वी सी दिस डिविजन इन दीज टू फॉर्म आई एम वेरी है वेरी रिलेवेंट क्वेश्चन वेरी रिलेवेंट क्वेश्चन अब देखिए क्या है हिंदुजम इज वेरी एंशियंट रिलीजन It is absolute freedom. We are not bound by one one uh, creed only. Now, this is what you have to understand. Mm-hmm. Today, Sai Baba is called. Our mm-hmm. uh, Guruji, Jalandhar Wale Guruji. There is a big movement going on. Jalandhar Wale mm-hmm. Guruji is also going on. Mm-hmm. Kabir is also going on. Kabir is also going on. Kabir is also going on. And what is different? Basically, we have to choose and seek the higher path. We have to move forward. Do you understand? There is no difference. There is no difference. and i will tell you difference is only for ignorant and uh, basically maine kya kaha do po- important point coming back to your question why this many many past diversities because our ancient religion there's a big great important to human being human evolution but hamari andar hi hai we should evolve ourselves realize ourselves but maine ye bhi dekha because of so many human problems with modern world there's a great communication but there's a great chaos also both run simultaneously in this modern world we have lost faith in ourselves jo milta usi ko pakadte hain we don't hmm. seek to go on an advanced path one higher hmm. path hmm. no difference nahi hai acha to coming back to tantra aap you, you mentioned tantra in your first answer we saying that tantra is the i, I think the functional aspect of shaivism if i am not wrong however in common balance uh, tantra has come to uh, receive a lot of flack from common people because it is it is associated with certain things which are do not seem to give a very positive result like this considered to have black magic or like consist of black magic a lot of uh, sex can you distill for us tonight what tantra actually is and how it is dis- different from these distortions which have come to grip the human mind making them discard this very uh, फंक्शनल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल योर क्वेश्चन इज अ वेरी बिग क्वेश्चन आई फील इट इज अस्ट आंसर इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन तंत्रिंग इट इन सच अगेटिव वे करेंटली इन टूडे Uh, in fact, this question is dear to me also. It's not mm-hmm. a longer answer. I try to explain many, many things, aspects of uh, this question to people. Please, please. If you, if you, if you, if you can, if you can, you know, give it us, uh, give us a reply in a little brief. Uh, in a brief, which will let me tell you, yeah. because what is basically that? I'll say while Vedas and Tantra begins, mm-hmm. basically Tantra. What is Tantra? Tantra is a totality which. Ex- mm-hmm. अल्टीमेट रियलिटी जिसमें अल्टीमेट रियलिटी का विस्तार हो वही तंत्र है आदिशंकराचार्य सुंदर लहरी it is nothing but a tantric text now tantra gives a knowledge of totality 
it has everything supreme bhakti supreme gyan so it let me come to now change my question change my answer it is good bad and ugly you can say the tantra tantra gives you total knowledge while vedanta is distilled knowledge not this not this not this this is rejected this is rejected tantra is bare all bare open mm. so there was a little danger of misuse mm. because lord shiva is called the adi guru of tantra because bhutas varis shisha bhut preet chamchan all the huge carry everything said mystics rakshasas bhutas preetas everybody he would carry so what happened tantra gives us ultimate but kashmir shivas essentially is the finest and ultimate knowledge of tantra which only addresses moksha marga mm-hmm. that's its purest noblest path of tantra which addresses moksha marga but what happened tantra has when you go down down he will tell you uh, dhamar tantra mamache mamakeshwari tantra in fact you want my answer in beep i could have discussed on sex also because many people ask me mm. the reality but what who is competent to talk about it who is in sambhav shambhava state who is thoughtless desireless who is a realized person ultimate real he is only competent mm. in this material world we are we go down 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 we are attracted towards negative things mm. and negative things take hold of us and we pay the consequences of this mm. and tantra ultimate is the path you have to follow this path to get bliss reality in this very life you can realize something that i can my humbly my humble submission is that it is tantra you can really get something in this very life and since it is a bare all the totality of knowledge it tells you everything and if you are attracted to was negative thing we have to pay the consequences of this thing i will end in this very story type medium very simple thing do you know that uh, how uh, uh, goswami tulsidas meets hanuman if any of one is very interesting thing how he said yeah please please uh, one minute because that will give a, uh, that will focus you on the knowledge of totality everything is divine mm-hmm. good is divine bad is divine everything is divine mm-hmm. this you know he is going to morning morning chore you would mm-hmm. just you know he would carry some lota of water in some jungle Mm. what about water was left he would put it on a babul pad mm. you know the this water so that that pad let it this made pad also grows you would put that water whatever was left out of his morning mm. you just, ablutions uh, ablutions ah, mm. exactly they say what happens after some time jeev atma preet atma came out of the babul pad mm. it you have set spend me aapne mujhe trift kiya you have set my this water this is only water for me is not a holy water mm. i'm very very happy sir what can i do for you sir what can i do for you he said oh i am purely a bhakt of ram i want my passion is only ram i want to meet the master lord rama mm. help me in meeting my lord rama mm. he said i am a preet away from god i want to dear god i am scared of god what can you do but i must fulfill what is there ask any material benefit oh sir said i want nothing i want only ram i and that's my passion mm. so preeta raja also got worried he said oh i can do one thing i can help you i can't take you to god because that's not my line i'm away from my yoni mm-hmm. i will tell you ram ji's bhakt is hanuman the great from mm. sir i want to meet him that be a great favor to me he said no what happened there's been whenever there's a ram katha is a particular village ram katha is going on and there will be a leaper a very leaper and miserable person he will just occupy the last seat before the katha begins and he will be the last person to leave mm. no man comes in the form of a leaper to listen mm. to the katha mm. and exactly sant tulsi das goes there and he sees a leaper coming and when he was leaving he just touches his feet mm. you are no man sorry why am i leaper what shame please how do you touch me you will get infected by me he said sir you are no man no man he just no man gave darshan mm. and the entire his life again life changed in ramana also he said preet i i bow my give my respects to preet raja king of preetas who has helped me to get this thing so my dear if you go deeper in spiritual everything is divine mm-hmm. but ordinary materialistic people you know they will always bifurcate go towards negative things okay okay yeah we do understand but uh, don't you feel uh, kazi ji that even though shaivism uh, talks about a lot uh, a complete holism uh with regard to life uh, and uh, how we look at the world and it's very holistic in nature 
yet at the same time uh, ordinary people cannot practice it why because uh, they there is a great chance of they falling into certain pitfalls owing to their own uh, weaknesses because if it everything is considered as uh, acceptable or holy or pure so may they lose they may so lose the sense of awareness as well as discrimination and plunge completely basically what i understand the implication of question is unless we have some strict path something like that people will get mis misled sadhana hmm. in that that is a question is it not unless you know hmm. basically i always emphasize i always emphasize in my all teachings hmm. in life of masters that i say i want three gifts what is humility Second is love, and third is compassion. Let it be nature itself. Mm. And of course, I always say, have faith in yourself because mm. God is within you. You must mm. love yourself. Eat well, be well dressed because mm. God is within you. Mm. And always be positive for tomorrow. God mm. will do everything uh, positive tomorrow. Because mm. point is, essence path is the divine place. Take you away from your individual personality to a divine personality. When divine grace becomes more and more obvious, you will be happy. satisfied and confident so my humble request to my uh, seekers and divine friends is that oh see the life of saints human they have wonderful human values and all the human values and then you will have a definitely better progress in okay. the order of spiritual path okay yeah right right so um, also uh, please tell us that what is the role of the feminine energy in shaivism Uh, how is it looked upon or is it that women or the feminine energy is given more importance in shaivism than the male energy because generally what we see is in the in in the world most people refer to god as he we want to know in shaivism is there a difference in this regard i mean he means uh... he means male he is god is considered as male we i want to know in shaivism is there a difference in this regard uh, do uh, do shaivites uh, consider the divine mother as the main primordial force governing the universe or they perceive her in a little different manner how is the feminine essence looked at uh, should i answer shaivism? from the kashmir shaivism point of view should i answer from the yes 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 how kashmir shaivism they say came in the kal yuga of course our main guru is sage durvasa rishi they say lord shiva initiated durvasa rishi in mount kailash lord shiva assumed the form of shrikantanatha and initiated durvasa rishi on the shiva agamas the knowledge of shiva tantra and is a beautiful how they initiate they initiate at pashanti level not by verbal written document your brain to his brain that was the tradition of initiation and the shrikant natha disappeared after initiating durvasa rishi so durvasa rishi was he got the knowledge now he was asked to spread this knowledge he could find no worthy disciple whom he could give the knowledge so he created mind born son called trambak natha and initiated that disciple his own son mind born son was initiated but he also created mind born daughter that's what important we give Shaivism, uh, Trambak Aditya, and he initiated her in a very uh, colorful ritual. She was initiated by Sage Durvasa Rishi. Mm. There are female masters. In fact, my biggest passion is Mata Laleshwari. I have worked on that. Are saying she as a expresses the supreme of Kashmir Shaivism. It's through uh, Mata Laleshwari. I have studied mm. her classes. She was mm. a Shaivi yogini. She was a feminine mm. energy only. A Shaivi mm. yogini is Mata Laleshwari. Mm-hmm. but coming back to that what is very important i will further classify your question parvashiva ultimate reality has two aspects prakasha and vimarsha light and experience prakasha is represented by lord shiva no shiv tatva i can't say lord shiva shiv tatva vimarsha is represented by shakti vimarsha is experience consciousness is experienced by shakti only but every manifestation the root is only shakti Mm. it is a shakti shakti mm. great supreme will supreme mm. not supreme action mm. the maya shakti is the willing power mm. the goddess of experience mm. vimarsha mata so mm. it uh, great highest you know respect is given to shakti mm. okay ardhanarishwar many many things you know we can many things are there ardhanarishwar and other things also 
Okay, because I ask this question, but because I hear that in Shaivism, uh, there's a, a path called the worship of the Shakta, the Shakta. And Shakta is a complete, uh, is, is symbolized uh, by the goddess energy herself. So there are so many pithas uh, which are uh, belonging to the goddess energy, which is spread all across India. So is it that to reach uh, the ultimate divine, the path is through Shakta worship, through uh, goddess worship? Actually, what traditionally we are doing, we have been traditionally uh, worshipping Shakti only traditionally. Hmm. But whatever knowledge I have got, I owe it that Swayambhu Shakti Peet in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Swayambhu Shri Chakran the Shila, very, very powerful deity. I used to go to every day there. So, mm -hmm. and uh, what we have done, we have we have a book called Panchastavi, the five tatvas. It's a summer mm -hmm. of the divine Shakti, which is very, very mm -hmm. in our this thing. On the mm -hmm. path, by Shakti, you get it is a uh, catalyst for realization. Okay, so how does Shaivism look at the concept of Maya, Maya, which is a, which is a part of the parlance of Vaishnava path? It is considered to be illusion, which afflicts all mankind, and from which most of us are seeking liberation. And it happens only through the grace of the of God when we get liberated from Maya, and then we are able to attain our true self. What is the take of Shaivism on the concept of Maya? <laughs> Beautiful question. Kathena Maya Thagni hai. Kindly listen. It's not, not only, uh, let me further expand your question. It's not only in the, what called Vaishnava tradition that Maya is, you know, Thagni, Maya se bachna. Mm. Vedanta Shaivism. Maya is an important question. They say, Brahman Satyo Jagat Mithya and mm. Maya is an illusion. Maya deludes you. Maya takes you away from this thing. Mm. Different story to tell in Kashmir Shaivism. Mm. We have a different story because when everything is divine, that's why we said Tantra, if you think everything is divine. Mm. Shiva creates pure tattva, she creates Shakti, Man, Bodhi, Ankar. Then Lord Shiva creates a wheeling power. That's called Maya Shakti. Maya Shakti is only created by the Lord Shiva. Mm. Shiva creates Maya, just Shiva has to become Jiva. How Shiva can become boom, dumb, down, down to Jiva? It's, it's pure Shiva, then Maya gives limitation mm. and slowly, slowly Purush, Prakati, Man, Buddhi, Hankar, you know. This is a bunch of Mahabhutas, Jal, Vayu, Vagara. So mm. the, uh, Maya is divine. Mm. It's a divine power of Lord Shiva. Once we realize it by our sadhana, bhakti, uh, his grace, we can realize it and we will, it will, it will be. Same Maya will aid us to liberation also. I it was just since one week I'm only on the chapter of happiness. I'm interacting a lot of people. Mm. This mind has many, many illusions, jealousy, bad feelings. How can you realize? Say, same mind will be your cause of liberation. Same mind will liberate you by the grace of Lord Shiva. Is it uh, can we say you know that Maya afflicts human beings? It also causes suffering, but it is, it is also the reason for man looking for higher answers to his existence because. Had Maya not been there, pain would not, not have been there, and nor would have been there any any reason for human beings to look for salvation and look for the absolute truth. Is it true? I like if I'm assuming it's very it's a very important, very nice question you have asked. Very mm -hmm. good question, as well as answer also. You have answered the question. No, I'm just like because, no, because whatever we are telling, we have you know, when Shiva becomes Jiva, how Shiva becomes Jiva? Mm -hmm. Maya only. Mm -hmm. Then Jiva will strive to go back to the Shiva. The mm -hmm. Shiva tells us uh, levels of realization. Mm -hmm. And the technique will be gone about our meditation. So mm -hmm. that's a very important thing. Yes, Maya will make us to experience pleasure and pain. Mm -hmm. So that way it becomes very it holistic in yes. nature. And it is not the enemy it is considered to be. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Okay, okay. Taziji, also tell me uh, what is, uh, like, what, what, how is Kashmir Shavism? Or rather, how are you thinking of uh, making Kashmir, Kashmir Shaivism mainstream in today's world? And uh, you know, how can it uh, salvage Sanatan Dharma in the current times? Because that is, in fact, my effort is to teach Kashmir Shaivism to a common people. And mm. that's what exactly, is, that's my rather, this is my current passion, or that this is my passion. I'm not telling you Kashmir Shaivism, higher philosophy, read that your life will be lost. No. It is 
simple thing you can adopt kashmir shaism and you yourself be your own master you can judge at what what level you are mm. it it can really unite the world it, it is beyond estimates of caste creed gender anybody's eligible in kashmir shaism Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Make you. You have to be only humble, humility, love, and compassion. Okay. How? Another question. How? How? How can Kashmir Shaivism help human beings live a happy life? How? How can it be practical and applicable in in the worldly life, in our day to day living? Boga and moksha. It's a holistic living. Kashmir mm -hmm. Shaivism. Our focus is on a holistic life. Mm -hmm. Your material life should be also positive. Your spiritual should be. You must. Really, progress on the spiritual path, mm -hmm. but material life has to be very positive. Mm -hmm. We always focus on that because everything is divine. Mm -hmm. You can generally overcome jealousy, hatred. Only through Kashmir Shaivism will give a catalyst to mm -hmm. overcome jealousy, hatred. You will be a wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. That's my firm belief: you will be a wonderful, excellent human being. Be mm -hmm. ordinary people. How has Kashmir Shaivism brought a difference to your own life? What paradigm shifts have you experienced in your know, personal life after you you were drawn to Kashmir Shaivism? You learned it, you practiced it, and tell us if you have had certain transcendental experiences related to Shaivism and or Lord Shiva, if I may say so. Uh, were you able to have certain those experiences of Lord Shiva himself? If so, and then what were they? We can do two things. I will tell you generally. Shaivism has, of course, helped me on the spiritual path, mm. given me the correct teachings. Mm. The correct teaching is basic teaching is divine grace. Mm. One focus on the divine grace. Mm. Once we focus on Virendra Kaji, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Focus on Lord Shiva, everything will happen. They say, "Purak jo kam bigade, Ramo kaj banaye re." I have, you know, what will happen tomorrow? I'll say. What will happen next moment, tomorrow? What is future? I, everything will be good if you if you have full, total faith in Lord Shiva. Mm. The absolute unity in my mm. in my real experience. Achha, now this is we have a challenge, but nobody can say there is no problem. There are problems in life. Mm. Like for example, can you share a certain life experience related to how your perception towards life underwent a change after Shaivism entered your life? But so most of us are very dualistic in nature. We we do to make tend to make a distinguish. Uh, di sorry, we do tend to distinguish between good, bad, right, wrong, acceptable, unacceptable. Were were you able to tan transcend this human limitation, which is uh, which plagues most of us? Really, it has helped me a lot because mm -hmm. this is slightly personal question, but mm -hmm. it really helped me a lot in mm -hmm. all these complicated situations addressing people. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes my own dis there are disappointments. This mm -hmm. really helped me to come out of all this negative mm -hmm. disappointments. It's not that you know everything is smooth and Kashmir Shaivism means tomorrow your life will be absolutely smooth. No, there's a wheeling and revealing energy of Lord Shiva as the play is going on. But mm -hmm. Shaivism will guide you. You'll not get upset over the situation. Mm -hmm. You'll have calm. You'll have faith. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I mean the aura of love comes out from your personality. I can. Mm -hmm. It's my humble submission, and it has also given me an inner guidance how to go advance in sadhana also, which I share with others also. Yeah. Ji, 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 ji. Thank you, Gazi ji, so uh, so much for being on the show tonight and uh, benefiting us all from your really timeless wisdom regarding Kashmir Shaivism and what it stands for and how it is one of the most holistic. Our principles of life that we have before us, we only need to kind of be more open-minded towards it, and explore it and uh, delve deeper into it to know the wealth of spiritual wisdom that we have in our country. Thank you so much, everybody.